watched Good morning. Good morning. Have you watched the new uh, Secret Invasion show yet? I have not. Is that on uh, Disney Plus? Yeah. So we came out Okay. Uh Wednesday. Usually I think Wednesday's usually like the the Marvel days or the Disney mm-hmm. Plus days where they reveal like Marvel and uh Star Wars. And so the the new show came out and it was it was found out that the intro was created through AI. Ooh. Through AI art and it caused a lot of backlash, like a lot of backlash. I wonder what they used for input on that, like their well, description. Like, I have that through, like a I have that answer GPT for you. Thing? So I have I have that answer for you. And okay. So, uh, a tweet here from a Stephen Ford says, Marvel Disney have infinite money yet used AI for secret invasion opening credits. A slap in the face to literally every artist Disney has ever worked with and something that overshadows the hard work everyone did on this show. But, according to Method Studios, okay. right? Uh, while the AI component provided optimal results, AI is just one tool among the array of tool sets our, our, our artists used. No artist jobs were replaced by incorporating these new tools. Instead, they complemented and assisted our creative teams. Hmm. Uh, teams of designers well, sk- skillfully leveraged the power of both existing and custom AI technologies to apply the otherworldly and alien look. The entire process guided by expert art direction encompassed the initial storyboard phase, illustration, AI generation, 2D, 3D animation, and culminated in the final re- final comp- compositing stage. My only question with that would be, was this during the... Um, uh, the writer strike stuff that happened no, to this, coincide. This must have happened. This must have been done. I usually assume that it's usually a year in advance. Mm, true. You know, true. but I it's usually a couple it's probably just a couple months. But I, I mean I think this was already all done. Uh, I, the intro looks amazing. Um, they also said, working on Secret Invasion, a captivating show exploring the infiltration of aliens into human society, provided an exceptional opportunity to delve into the intriguing realm of AI, specif- specifically for creating unique character attributes and movements. Utilizing a custom AI tool for this particular element perfectly aligned with the project's overall theme and the desired aesthetic. And again, no one was replaced. No one lost lost their jobs in this whole process. As you see, they had a whole team of artists who knew what they were doing among amongst this. And it's there. You know? It's just going to be a new avenue of music, I think. Like, 80s were for rap. I guess in a sense, it's just might, it's, you might actually get a style of music out of all this somehow. I yeah, I mean something. They're, they're, I mean, people are finding ways to utilize it. Teams of teams of uh, of groups of artists and producers uh, uh, alike. I'm not mad at it. Um, it. Now, this isn't really much news. I just kind of thought this was kind of interesting to see that when Disney I, of all people. I mean, well, first of all, this this is I'm changing the subject now. Like, I was going okay. through my emails and I get like Indeed emails still for some odd reason. Mm-hmm. And yeah, one of the too. emails was AI um, AI chat prompt engineer for um, Goldman Sachs. <laughs> <laughs> it was like two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year. I was like, "What are they? What are they doing? What are they doing?" So I thought it was kind of interesting. I didn't apply. I'm not interested. I like my job here doing podcasts. Yeah. You know, yeah. you know. But I thought. I thought. Time. But there's a lot of occupations currently that are are utilizing ai for engineering or whatever you know whatever they use it for they're, they're getting it done so you know it's nice to see that people are turning against the tide that they thought was coming against them and they found a way they're starting to find ways to utilize it and to conform and to to live with it you know uh, mm-hmm. I've, i like i always said nature and technology always exist it's always scary at first in some aspects too. Yeah. So they were doing. People are not exact. They're not big on change. I mean, like just for an example, like when Bob Dylan went to electric, you know, people had a stir about that. So it's just a weak example, but. 
Ed, Ed, look what happened. Look what happened in the end. He created the beautiful music. All right, so we did music. Uh, what were the what were the five songs you chose? Uh, Parabola by uh, Tool. Okay. Uh, the Warmth by Incubus. Okay. Uh, Trouble Every Day by Frank Zappa and the Mother's of Invention. And E7 by Nirvana. Which one? And these aren't D7 by Nirvana. They did a cover. It's a cover, actually. Okay. Uh, and these aren't in any particular order with the pictures that we show, but I'm, the last one that I remember was a Waterfall by Jimi Hendrix. Or May This Be Love. Not Waterfall, excuse me. It's May This Be Love. Very nice. Uh, I chose Rawhide. <laughs> nice. Don't you dare make me sing that again. <laughs> um, the Last Day by Polo, by Incredible Polo. Mm. I also did... Walk the Line by Santino LaSaint. Hmm. Uh, which That'll is actually a really interesting song. I actually did a, a heavy metal song called Depths 3 by Silent Planet, which I think actually came out probably my favorite one. And Anomaly by by I See Stars, which is a newer song. But uh, one of my favorites right now. Um I see you know, stars. we've been we've been talking about we've been talking about um, the use of music and AI. Um, I think if you want to do the next episode, we could do our, we could conjure up our songs. The next episode, we'll get three songs and we'll rate them. We'll do like a radio show theme. I'm down with that. Yeah. We're going to next week. We're going to do a radio show themed episode of the artificial mind with AI music, AI music. You choose three. I choose three and we'll get it done. Uh, but let's, let, I mean, let's, let's not waste any time. Let's go right into it. Let's get lyricized. All right. So all right. you, you chose, this one is, is this is, um, yep. Correct. Oh uh, God. Now up till this album, I, I, I like tool a lot, but after I heard that this song, I really liked tool a lot. Um, yeah. This gets into your, this song gets into your head a little bit. It definitely gets you more uh, hyped up, more spiritual feeling. It, it, it does a lot for me. I, I usually, when I get uh, moved by a song, I can get like a whole movie in my head. Like my dream someday yeah. will be to do movies to put along with the music that I already got for it in my head. And, oh God. The problem is I wouldn't be able to get all the rights to these songs to put in the movie because they would just be awesome but um this song in particular is basically talking about um be here now um enjoy this moment this time that you're breathing that you're alive and uh i think i listened to this song at least 20 times last night watching different people's reactions to it and stuff yeah i know i know that this song like, has like a deep uh connection and theme of consciousness as well uh, very uh, and, and there's also been like like I have I actually have it written down here that there's actually themes of like sex and the spirituality of sex mm -hmm. you know I uh, that's another theme that, that I also pick up the male and female as well yeah yeah, yeah. yep yeah, very good choice very good choice most of the songs uh that I put on here are, are very moving to me. That's what I didn't want to put on here. Like they, a lot of music does that, but these ones, uh, it's these particular five songs were a perfect mesh of lyric and music. That's how I look at it. Very nice. I like it. And, and bass as well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. <laughs> this one, uh, kind of silly, boom. but. Um, I wanted something more, but I just this came out cute because I love Daxons. But this one is Rawhide. Uh, Rawhide is the classic Western theme song originally written by Ned Washington and composed by Dmitry Tiomkin. It was famously performed as the theme song for the television series of the same name. 
Um, it's primarily about the life and challenges of cowboys working on cattle drives. Uh, but the lyrics describe the cowboys' dedication and perseverance as they keep the cattle moving. You know, the rolling, rolling, rolling. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Keep them doggies rolling. Uh, despite various obstacles mm-hmm. like and difficult conditions, they are tasked with driving the herd through swollen streams and during rain, wind, and other other challenges. Um, the phrase hell bet for leather indicates the determination and commitment to their work. But the also the the song also conveys a sense of longing and missing loved ones left behind. The narrator expresses a desire for companion companionship, good food, vittles, love and affection, love and kissing they that are waiting for them at the end of their ride. Uh, the chorus emphasizes the need to keep the cattle moving and maintain the momentum uh, but the cowboys are mm-hmm. urged to move them on head them up cut them out it's mm-hmm. like move them on head them up cut them out ride them in move them on head them up raw hide that you know that you know so using the traditional techniques of herding and controlling the livestock and they use that in the lyrics of the song and in the song but you know the song captured the spirit of cowboys mm-hmm. i do i do love this song uh the first I don't remember how how I stumbled upon this song. I kind of just like I was listening to Western music one day, and it just kind of popped. I was like, "Oh, this is this is great." Uh, one of my favorite songs has nothing to do with the Mid Journey image. I, I feel kind of bad about it, but I just love how this came out. So you appeal to everybody that way. It's a good song, and you get some doggies out of it. Exactly. <laughs> <clears throat> ah. You probably heard that song like twenty times before you actually heard it. Kind of a uh, thing. Yeah. For real. Uh, and- uh, with this next piece. Oh, go yep. ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was gonna tell you, like, what okay. what is this? Because this is this is this beautiful. would be uh, this would be a Jimi Hendrix uh, inspired. Uh, the song was "May This Be Love," and I, I already made a mistake by calling it "Waterfall," but that's actually the first word in the lyrics. Uh, waterfall. Uh, nothing can harm me at all. My worries seem so very small. Oh, my waterfall. Yeah, Jimmy. The only man who's like badass, sexy, and beautiful at the same time. He was just. It's a that's psychedelic. His native roots. That song is literally a psychedelic ballad. But it, but it also talks about the beauty of nature as well, too. Yep. Yeah, he was, he was in all of that stuff. That's what I, I loved about him. He was a rocker, but he was a, he had a side to him too it's very it's very cool because he oh in his music he always talks about like this like enchantment of living long you know and and using the spirit to live forever and i think that's very beautiful uh but you know like i this song i i am very familiar with this song and it has like a desire for a deep and profound like it's like he's asking for a deep and profound love connection where like he's hoping that the intense emotions that could potentially lead to a lasting fulfilling fulfilling relationship and he just wants it to last as long as possible yeah. don't ever change your ways yep all with me for another hundred days i really i really you are really good stuff i really do i really do love this song i'd uh, say hey, his lyrics match his music he is to me one of the greatest guitarists well i to many people he's one of the greatest in guitarists and songwriters of all times and this was so this song was actually part of his debut studio album for and it released in 1967 the album was um are you experienced no great album all yeah. of them are great albums very good very good um the next one is a newer song uh called anomaly by i see stars uh the song just came out a couple just just a couple weeks ago. Uh, just a couple weeks Who's ago. Who's your lead singer? Uh, Girl Devin, or guy? Uh, Devin Oliver. It's a male. Uh, they're actually okay. from Detroit, Mich- Michigan. Yeah, they're oh. they're they're from your land. They are. Uh, remember that song when we did the, remember when we did the Amp Radio show and I played the song and you were like, "What was that?" Uh, yeah. it, this is the song that I am portraying. Uh, the song. Um, uh, how do I say this? Uh, it seems to express a sense of personal intro introspection and self identity. Um, 
the singer acknowledges feeling like an outsider or a villain and like he's experiencing like these conf conflicting emotions uh and he expresses the desire to break free from the current state of being and live differently and the repeated mention of being an anomaly suggests a feeling of being different or unique compared to others uh, there is a yearning for understanding and acceptance from someone referred to as my evermore, which I think is w one of the best parts of the song, which is part of the chorus, which he says, my evermore, have you finally figured me, figured me out, anomaly, I'm an anomaly, anomaly, I'm an anomaly. Nice. Very, very beautiful. And um, I will check that out. Yeah, I, I mean, I'll play it w when we finish the show so you, so you can hear it one more time. But there is a yearning for understanding and acceptance from from someone that is referred to as my Evermore. And the singer seems to be seeking validation and hoping that this person will finally understand them. Like, they want to be figured out and have their true self recognized. The mention of time and the idea of resetting the clock could indicate a desire for a fresh start or a new beginning. The singer may feel burdened by past mistakes or experiences and longs for a clean slate. But ultimately, without more information like about the specific song or any official explanations provided by the song writer, like all these like these interpretations vary. Mm -hmm. You know, like and this is the interpretation that I had from it. I feel like I could relate to this. Um, mm -hmm. so many people could relate to this. A lot of people feel like an anomaly. Now, the image itself, I think it came out beautiful. It shows this this woman, and I the art itself is just right on. It's like thrown on splash paint with a little bit of drip art into it uh, over in the bottom. And Wheels. I, I think this, this image perfectly dep depicts the song. And there were actually some really good ones that came out of this, too. Hmm. Yep. And uh, you ready okay. for the next one? The mic was cutting out a little bit there. Uh, yep. And all right. This would be inspired by Nirvana's cover of D7. Now, D7 was actually written by a guy named, uh, oh, good lord. Now I'm going to forget his name. last name, Sage. But, anyways, uh, <clears throat> this is a really kind of pepped up. I wouldn't say this was a, a very moving song, but this just kind of gets you going. Um, straight as an arrow, defect, defect, uh, not straight, not so straight, reject, reject. It's kind of Nirvana's Their style, style. Of writing. So I, yeah, it's a pretty straightforward punk rock song. I've actually never heard this song before. Yeah, just check it out. It's uh, it's on there. It was like an EP. It had three songs. It was harmoning. Uh, but I wanted to see what it would throw in for uh, a visual stimuli, if you will, on our mid journey. And I kind of liked how the stairway made an arrow shape. Yes. So I went with that. So I was like, okay, it definitely conveyed that part. Like a, like a portal. And it does look, yeah, and it looks like a portal. And that's uh, what D D7 stands for in the song is Dimension 7. And that was Ooh. another thing. I kind of liked that that Kurt Cobain was talking about dimensions and shit. It's like, oh, I don't hear that every day. That's and really cool, actually. Wall. Yeah. Okay, well, That's probably right. one of my favorite Nirvana songs. Okay. Uh, let's, you're, are you ready for the next one? Yep. Mm-hmm. This one is Depths the Third by Silent Planet. This is a very heavy song. But a very you've, deep song. You've played me some Silent Planet before, and I think I actually uh, downloaded some the other day. So, bravo to you. Yeah. So this one, Depths the Third, uh, the first two are amazing, by the way. But the third one, mm -hmm. uh, it explores the themes of intro, intro, introspection, personal struggle, and the complexity of human emotions. Uh, and like when you hear the opening lines, they they suggest a connection to the sea, symbolizing something vast and all knowing, and the vocalist feels small and cowardly in comparison. Uh, the lyrics mention being abandoned by time and sailing in circles, which could represent a sense of aimlessness or being trapped in repetitive patterns. And the reference to the moon and the sigh of flesh evokes a feeling of loneliness and fragility. Um, 
There is a desire for connection and understanding as he asks for the moon to rest their head on the breast and listen to their inner turmoil. And the imagery of broken mass and shattered ore suggests a state of disarray and vulnerability. They, the lyrics also mention darkness, suicide, and the struggle against one, one's own inner demons. And there's a longing to be loved and remembered despite the moments of forgetfulness and departure. But as the song progresses, there's a recognition of the destruction, the destructive forces at play, by sim symbolizing by the storm and the fury of the sea. And the singer confronts their own mortality and questions the perception of their existence. Did I, did I lose you? So out of order comes chaos. Yeah. And out of chaos comes order. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like and also like the mention of disintegration, the quest for someone to be the fire that burns in their lungs could imply a desire for passion, vitality, and the connection that transcends mere existence. Um, it is a very deeply introspective and emotional song, and it it's it's one of my favorite songs of all times. And I think that the that the, the image portrayed here really shows a sense of the emotion. And the theme that I was looking for with this song mm -hmm. it came out perfectly. Like that, and it coincides with the. Uh, <clears throat> we'll see how your transition goes into the, my next one. Because if it does, it'll go great with this one. Let's see. <laughs> so this song is a uh, an incubus song. It's called the warmth. And uh, uh, a little side note. Uh, I used to get songs all the time that would really motivate me. And as you get older, uh, you're, it's harder to find a song that'll like really get you motivated like you used to when you were young. So this was a couple of years ago. I was out camping and I just had a, a mix going on. And this song came out of nowhere and it really moved me. Uh, it felt like uh, the song sounds like you're in the ocean. Like talk. Well, it even has whale songs at the beginning of it. Yeah. So that's probably why I thought that. Uh, it's just a beautiful piece. Uh, I'd like to close my eyes, go numb, but there's a cold wind coming from the top of the highest high rise today. And that's where this picture kind of comes in. It's showing like someone looking down on the city, seeing all the pollution, just all the negativity of it. Yeah. But there's this chorus. This is the part that really got me. I think I might have even got a little teary eyed when I heard this because it was uh when there's a, a universal lyric that's true to everyone i think it moves pretty much everyone the same way but the the chorus was so don't let the world bring you down not everyone here is that fucked up and cold remember why you came here and while you're alive experience the warmth before you grow old i really like that i love that i love that very um you know, touches upon themes of self-discovery and personal growth as well. You know, because when you're, you know, you're growing in age, but you're also growing in spirit too, aren't you? There's a pattern too that you notice. I'm like, I'm picking all these songs that seem to like try to, they're building you up after you've been kind of knocked down a few hundred times. Too. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 but, also a and, but, but also a sense of, you know, protecting protecting land you know protecting nature conserving it and keeping it the way the how it's supposed to be mm -hmm. and the next one and the next uh so this one is the last day by incredible polo um, this this song has a sense of urgency and a desire to fully embrace and appreciate love and life uh, it, uh, the song emphasizes the importance of living each day as if it's your last. You know, very simple. Um, it's asked that they can approach life and their love as if every day is their final opportunity. And this is the perspective encourages a sense of immediacy, cherishing the present moment and not taking anything for granted. And then there's a repetition of, oh, our love is so far, suggests a longing for a deeper connection, a desire to bridge any emotional distance that may exist. The love that they have is valuable and precious and they want to make the most of it. The chorus reflects the narrator's efforts to express their love and devotion and the mention of gas tin and blast in the barrier could represent breaking through limitations and barriers to fully experience and express their feelings. That about covers it. <laughs> it's, it's beautiful. 
very it's very beautiful yeah. uh my son actually sent me this song okay this was the one that he was talking about. yeah okay. he he actually sent me this one uh i'm ready for you your last one yeah sure you know it sounds like he's going to end up being on this podcast with us down road he's going to be like our, our third music critic and he may he, he may be he may be uh taking our jobs while we work on something else <laughs> Mm-hmm. Talk to oh, me is about this. My this last one. one coming up. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> so again, I I was trying to choose um songs for this show that were kind of either made you feel good or, or or updated you or just had something to do with the times. Yeah. Uh, this song was written by Frank Zappa, and it was uh in regards to the Watts riots back in the '60s, I believe. And uh, if you look at the lyrics, uh, people, you'll see that uh, it almost reads like a rap from the 60s. Now, I know that rap actually originated in the late 70s. Everybody thinks it was the 80s, but it was actually started in the late 70s. Yep. And you can, a lot of artists back then still had that feeling of a rap without it being rap. Uh, Bob Dylan's another good one with the... Uh, subterranean homesick blues that johnny's in the basement the, the, the natural beat to it uh but this one i liked because it was frank zappa has always been very good about exploring our political things how yeah government can be and stuff but uh i'll just read a uh a few words from uh his uh, stuff uh well i've seen fires burning and the local people turning on the merchants in the shops used to sell their brooms and mops and every other household item watched a mob just turn and bite them and they say it served them right because a few of them were white and that's the same across the nation black and white discrimination yelling you can't understand me and all all that other jazz they hand me and the papers and tv and all the mass stupidity that seems to grow more every day each time you hear some nitwit say he wants to go and do you in because the color of your skin just don't appeal to him no matter if it's black or white, because he's out for blood tonight. You know we. Okay, yeah, it's it's pretty powerful. Strawbridge stuff. out here, fucking spitting. Strawbridge is sp and, spitting, and guys. Usually Frank Zappa stuff's a little more silly too. Yeah. So I kind of like. It's very it interesting that he did something. That he did something like this. I do respect it. I love. I love the the riot depiction too. All right, here we go for the very last one. Here, yeah. Drum roll. So this one is Santino. It's still going. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to say. Like, I don't it, know why it sounds acting up. Yeah, because I, it, it's all it's all going here. This song this song is Santino La Saint. Uh, this song is called Walk the Line. Let me look for my notes here real quick. Uh, this song is, is actually very interesting because it explores themes of indiv individuality, social expectations, and the desire for freedom and personal fulfillment. Uh, the first verse expresses a sense of disillusionment with the status quo. It is observed, it's, it's, it's observed that people being stuck in their routines and unable to differentiate between truth and lies and the imagery of working hard and taking pay cuts while pleading for a paycheck highlights the struggle and dissatisfaction that can arise from a societal norm and its expectations uh, the chorus deflects a yearning for something more meaningful and fulfilling and the singer expresses a desire to break free from a passive submissive role and be a wolf in the world full of sheep they want material success um, new whip in a house on the beach. That's that's the lyric, but more importantly, they want peace of mind and are willing to strive for it. Uh, in the second verse, it's reflected on their own experience and resilience that they acknowledge that their pain and individuality have shaped them and made them different from others. And the question, they question the the authenticity of those in power and assert that they don't need saving because they see through the lies. The lyrics also criticize the societal consumption of misinformation and manipulation. And it's repeated again in the chorus that emphasizing the singer's refusal to conform to societal expectations and, the, and their determination to maintain their own identity in pursuit of peace. Um, it's refused to let 
their life go down in flames and to try to make their voice heard amidst chaos and distractions. <clears throat> My yeah. mic had went out for a minute there. I apologize. No, it's a, it's all good. So the the very powerful song. Uh, I think the image itself it's simple, but it shows you know a man in the suit with his skull, and I'm not, you know, I'm I'm not opposed to thinking that this is what the the dev, the devils of all trades look like, you know, because you know we 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 have to have our the only brand. brand, you know, you only you only yes. break the, you only break the simulation if you start breaking the simulation you know you just gotta start pushing it and toying with it and things like that you know but absolutely you know again there's a lot of good music out there i'm sure we're gonna do this again i'm sure we're gonna this, do this is again. yeah this is fun i i liked how some of the results others i i'm definitely gonna work on this is something that i can do on my uh pastime too i liked how this idea turned out yeah yeah and so next week we're we're not gonna have any images we're just gonna do a straight radio show right so we're gonna do right. a radio theme you choose three you know what choose four songs i'll choose four songs and we'll we'll take it from there um lyrics are beautiful lyrics are interpretive lyrics can be anything and i'm glad that we were able to do such a cool episode like this i so, guys, you know where to find us, www.linktree.com slash the Artificial Mind Podcast. Uh, all our links are there. You can, you know, leave a review, send us an email, give us a suggestion of an episode. We'd love to, we'd love to take it in. Uh, you have anything to say before we go, Strobridge? I hope y'all can hear me. I love you. Keep on listening. Tune in. <laughs> we got more coming. Yep. See you guys next week.